So if you've been looking for a practical seven-seater SUV, you've likely come across the Kia Sorento and the Hyundai Santa Fe as potential options. But now Toyota has made that decision just that little bit more complicated with the Highlander. Uh, this is an incredibly popular offering in the US, having sold millions of models over the past two decades. But this marks the very first time the Highlander has made it to UK shores. Undoubtedly, the highlight at the front here is this trapezoidal design on the black front grille, which I quite enjoy, and I love the uh, chrome surrounding it as well. It creates quite a prominent look for the front end here. I'm enamored with the design of these door mirrors. I like that you've got the warning lights and side indicators on the side there, and at the top, uh, that design is going to be in whatever body colour that you've chosen. And if we peer over the top, I can't quite see because I'm pretty small, but if you're over six foot, you can check out the panoramic roof that comes as standard with the Highlander. But overall, the design, I feel like it's, it's all right. There's nothing here that's kind of standing out to me and that's making the Highlander that much more distinctive than the other um, large SUVs on the market, but it's fine, yeah. Everything kind of works harmoniously together. But we've arrived at perhaps what's the most exciting part of this review and that's exploring the boot space on offer. So in the back here with all seven seats upright we're looking at around 332 litres of space to play with. Thank you very much. And that's enough room for I'd say about two or three of these carry-on suitcases. As you can see they fit quite nice and snug in there. There's no awkward gap created from folding down the seats. It's all nice and flat making it really easy to slide awkwardly shaped and sized items. But wait, there's more because we can fold down that middle row of seats. That will get you a total luggage capacity of 1,909 litres. Really, really good, really practical. Should be able to fit everything and anything into the back of your Highlander. Okay, then it's about time we find out how this very American SUV drives on UK roads. As you get up to speed in the Highlander, it does its best impression of the GR Supra. The, the engine's pretty rowdy. Um, but once you are at a steady speed, the speed that you intended, uh, it does get pretty quiet in the cabin, which is great. Let's talk about visibility then. As you would expect, it's fantastic. You get a great lofty position off the road ahead. Uh, the mirrors on either side are nice and wide. I've just been relying on those instead of the view out the back on that rear view mirror. Uh, it's pretty poor, it's quite restrictive. Um, and the rear privacy glass panel on that uh, back window doesn't help things, especially at night. You can hardly see anything out of that, but that's not an issue for me because of those mirrors. They're absolutely fine to rely on uh, for everyday driving. As you would expect from a new Toyota model, it comes with the latest suite of advanced safety features. I'm not going to run you through all of these because there's loads on offer, but uh, some of the highlights here include adaptive a uh, high beam, which automatically adjusts the intensity of the headlights. So it's something that you don't have to worry about while on the move. The car will just do that for you. Uh, you get blind spot monitoring. Uh, when, you, when a car passes quite close to your mirror there, it will actually light up on the side of those mirrors. So that's especially handy. It will draw your attention to that potential hazard. Uh, you get lane departure alert as well. So if you find yourself just swerving over the white lines, as I'm just going to do now, the car will just flash up on the dash there to alert you of that um, potentially precarious situation. Um, you also get intelligent front and rear parking sensors, and we'll demonstrate the parking in just a moment. And you get hill start as well. So if you find yourself coming to a complete stop on a hill, you don't have to put on the electronic parking brake, and you don't have to worry about rolling back. The car is going to keep the uh, keep itself quite steady there. So what is the infotainment like to use while on the move? Well, it's okay. But the uh, shortcut buttons on the side there make it really easy to get to the different menus uh, that you want to get to while going from A to B. I would like the screen to just be slightly more angled towards me. It's very much centre in the dashboard there. What about the uh, driver display then? Well, it shows all that key information right where you need it. It's very sharp, really easy to read. I'm pretty impressed with the uh, the uh, display here to be fair. So what else is going on inside the cabin? I'm gonna head back to our car park and I'll give you more of an in-depth tour of what's on offer inside the Highlander. There is some nice use of premium materials dotted around the cabin. For example, the grippy lever wrapped around the steering wheel, the uh, piano black uh, surrounding the infotainment cluster. I like this texture material under here in this uh, compartment that's perfect for your smartphone. And my personal highlight are the wood inlays it's very very lexus of a uh, toyota so you'll find those on the center compartment there and on the 
doors. Uh, so quite a minimal use of that material. I'm glad that they haven't overused it. Uh, gives the cabin quite a premium feel. But uh, considering the price tag of this vehicle, I would have liked to have seen less kind of cheap materials to really exude that luxurious feel that you want from a vehicle of this class. So you get power adjustable lumbar support for the driver's seat right here, which is great to see for a standard specification car. Uh, you also get heated front seats for both the driver and front passenger, uh, so they won't be moaning on a cold winter's day. And if you opt for the XL Premium variant, then you get heated rear seats as well as um, air ventilated seats for the driver and front passenger. So that's perfect for a hot summer's day when you need to cool down a little bit. It's time to talk about the tech, so let's highlight this Toyota Touch 2. It is functional, it does pretty much everything that you'd want it to do while on the move. It's just not as impressive as what's offered by rival uh, vehicles. Okay then guys, let's hop out and check out how much space is afforded to that middle row of passengers. As you can see, I've got lots of space to work with. I'm really, really comfortable. I'm miles away from that roof lining, so yeah very very comfortable. Um, if you fold up this bit on the middle seat, if there is no middle passenger of course, get a couple of cup holders. Uh, you can also use this as an armrest though it can be a little bit uncomfortable for your hand as you're resting on that hard plastic but can't really complain about that. Very very nice feature. You also get air conditioning controls at the back here as well and there's a couple of USB ports just down there for charging your phone. So yeah, I mean, the middle row passengers get a pretty sweet deal in the back here. So yeah, some great features on offer in the middle row, but let's hop into the back, the very back, that third row, to check out how much space is on offer, especially for passengers over six foot. So guys, I'm pretty depressed in the third row here. I've got to be honest with you. It's really, really dark. Legroom is awful. My knees are pretty much touching my chin. Um, but the highlight for me are the cup holders that I complained about earlier, but they actually act as some really nice elbow holders. Very, very comfortable indeed. Uh, the black leather that adorns the rest of the seats in the cabin is also found here on the third row uh, but they quickly become hard plastic and that digs into your back quite uncomfortably. You can feel that especially on short journeys. If you recline the seats a little bit it does reduce the impact of these. If you have them upright it is really really uncomfortable. Um, headroom for me is actually okay because I'm 5'8", a little bit of space to work with here. Passengers over six foot tall are going to find it really claustrophobic here though. They'd only be able to handle maybe 10 to 15 minutes, you know, driving to a relative's house or a party or something like that. Small kids though, they might be all right in the back here, but yeah, it's not a great third row, although seven seaters do struggle to kind of find that balance between comfort and practicality in the back here. So guys, should you buy, lease or finance a Toyota Highlander over its significant rivals? Well, I've really enjoyed my time with this large seven seat family SUV and that is down to a number of reasons. Firstly, that excellent hybrid powertrain. It makes the car very smooth and relaxing to drive. Uh, there is room for seven passengers in here, plus their luggage, and that's thanks to the uh, practical boot space that's on offer, especially if you fold down that third row uh, that awards you with 865 litres. So that's plenty of space for luggage, uh, camping equipment, skiing stuff, bits and bobs like that. This big lad doesn't come without his drawbacks though. Um, the driving experience isn't particularly exciting. It's very leisurely and relaxing and that's gonna, that's gonna put some people off. The infotainment setup definitely needs refining. I really would have liked to have seen the more advanced setup that you uh, get in the current US models. I'm not really too sure why it wasn't included here. When you go around corners, there's quite a severe amount of body lean, which is very noticeable. And it does feel like the car doesn't grip to the road as much as it should, which isn't particularly reassuring. And lastly is the price of the car. It is more costly than the Kia Sorento and the Hyundai Santa Fe. So you do need to weigh up whether that panoramic sunroof, the uh, hybrid powertrain, that excellent middle row and all the other features that do set this Highlander apart from the competition are worth that additional premium. And I am going to leave that up to you. But that's it for today. I've been Tom from OSV. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye guys.